Well, it looks like you got this wrong because two hours ago, Diddy appeared in court and pleaded not guilty and the judge decided not to release him on bail. And thanks to Matthew Russell Lee with Inner City Press, we now have all the details of what happened inside the courtroom. Diddy was obviously there with his attorney and he had two U.S. Marshals standing behind him and on the prosecutor's side, the table was full. The judge tells Diddy that the indictment has three counts, racketeering conspiracy, including trafficking, forced labor, bribery, arson, and obstruction of justice, then asked how he pleaded, to which he said, not guilty. When speaking to the judge, AUSA Johnson says these crimes carry a maximum sentence of life in prison or death. There is a risk of flight and that the person will obstruct justice or attempt to intimidate a witness. This is a presumption case based on trafficking. AUSA goes on to say that Diddy has abused victims for decades and used resources of his company to commit and cover up his crimes. He goes on to list some of the details saying that he set up freak offs forcing and during it. He also filmed some of them. He stalked the room with narcotics so that female victims would continue for multiple days. He also committed other physical assaults, kidnapping, and arson. He surrounded himself with and used firearms, which include the three that they seized, which are AR-15s. Then goes into bringing up what happened with Cassie, how she tried to escape a freak off, and we saw what happened in the hotel video. The video surveillance disappeared, and it was a cover-up, and it went on to be a cover-up for seven years until Cassie filed a lawsuit in November of 2023. The defendant denied it and called it all lies. After the video was publicized, the defendant admitted he was involved in this assault. It is clear you cannot believe him when he denied things. Make no mistake, March 5th is just one example. There are numerous assaults. He also goes on to say that when they interviewed witnesses, they have universally expressed fear. The defendant has contacted witnesses who received grand jury subpoenas. He contacted at least one victim. Before a September 14th statement by Miss Harper, the defendant called her 54 times in one day. They go on to say that R. Kelly was detained, Jeffrey Epstein was detained, and there was someone else who also was detained on all three grounds, even though the violence was committed by others. They conclude by saying the government has spoken to over 50 witnesses. We have sworn out warrants for cloud accounts. The search have yielded 90 cell phones and 30 other devices, including a surveillance system. The freak offs are corroborated 300 grand jury subpoenas. The defendant poses a danger to these proceedings through obstruction. He should be detained pending trial. His attorney then speaks and says that they knew this was coming since last fall and that he has been speaking to the prosecutor's chief and that the client flew to New York and he told prosecutors, I'd like him to have an opportunity to turn himself in. After the raids, we took Mr. Combs' passport on April 1st. After that, anytime he traveled domestically, we told prosecutors. His attorney then goes on to bring up what happened with Cassie and decides it would be a great idea to now victim blame. He says an issue is that Mr. Combs had more than one girlfriend. Okay, victim one, who is Cassie, was looking through his phone and saw that, then hit him on the head with a cell phone and took his clothing so he comes out in a towel. He tries to say that Cassie then went on to marry the trainer that Mr. Combs got for her. They had been cheating on each other for years. Now she has two kids with the trainer and years later realizes she had a good thing with Mr. Combs. He has her lawyer call his lawyer and say she's written a book and if he wants to buy the rights, you'll have the rights for $30 million. We have a recorded conversation. It did not go well for her and the lawyer. He then goes on to say that when he contacts witnesses, it's not to stop a criminal investigation. Why is it depicted as a one-sided thing? And his client has done nothing wrong. He then says that they interviewed six of the males. I would assume that were at the freak offs. If anyone was too drunk or too high or was it non-consensual and they all said no. Well, what do you think they're going to say? Is it trafficking if everyone wants to be there? No, we don't want the federal government in our bedroom. The kidnapping, we spoke to the victim. She didn't use that word to us. What part of the victims and the witnesses are terrified of Diddy and his team does the attorney not understand? Then goes on to say that Diddy hires a security company and where they keep the weapons in Diddy's home has nothing to do with Diddy. The mention of R. Kelly and Epstein, well, they were involved with children. Diddy was not. He concludes this by saying, Mr. Combs has earned this court's trust. I have nothing else to say. After taking a short break, the judge came back saying, in this case, I find the presumption has not been rebuted, so Sean Combs will be detained. There has been significant violence and weapons around, also coercion of witnesses 
witnesses, even gentle coercion can be effective. The type of behavior we're talking about happens behind closed doors. I thank your family members for coming, but I cannot release him. I think this is an outcome many people wanted, but I truly did not see it happening.